Hello and welcome to Sierra Make. Mother's Day is just around the corner, so I thought for today's project I would make her a little relaxing gift basket because she works so hard. These three items I picked for this gift basket are things that I know my mother will use, and it includes a handmade peppermint chapstick, a green tea lavender cooling spray, and a do not disturb eye mask. I also threw in a blue paper rose for decoration. All the recipes are in the description, and let's start off with the cooling spray. First thing you need is a little handheld spray bottle. So this one I'm reusing, so let me just give it a little wash with some soap and water, make sure it's all clean, and then we can use that. The other things you'll need is a pan, some green tea, some purified water or distilled water, some vitamin E oil, and some scented lavender oil. There's a lot of recipes out there that also call for some witch hazel, but I don't have any of that on hand, so I'm just going to omit that. To start off, I'm going to strongly brew some green tea in a pot. Green tea is both an antioxidant and anti-inflammatory, so it's very, very good for the skin. And that's why it's going to be in this cooling mist that you spray on, spray on your skin. <laughs> so once the green tea has boiled down a bit, we are going to set it aside to cool and pull out our other ingredients. The recipe I used called for a fourth cup of green tea and a fourth cup of purified water, which now that I think about it makes no sense because I boiled down my green tea. I think you would be fine if you just used a half cup of green tea. <laughs> but I was just following the recipe, so here is a fourth cup of green tea and a fourth cup of purified water. Next, we're going to add a few drops of vitamin E oil. Vitamin E oil is moisturizing, it prevents aging and wrinkles, and it is also an antioxidant. Again, very good for the skin. Speaking of good for the skin, I mentioned earlier that you could also add a fourth cup of witch hazel, which reduces acne, relieves inflammation, is also an antioxidant, and it helps protect against damage to the skin. I don't have that, so we're moving on to the lavender essential oil, which is just there for the smell. <laughs> Anyways, once your ingredients are all mixed together, it's time to pour it into the spray bottle. This cooling mist is meant to be used whenever it's hot outside, and you need just a little refreshing spritz to cool down. So I think it's a great gift for mothers, especially since we're entering summer hot weather time. With that done, let's move on to the next item in the gift basket, which is the chapstick. Here I have a small thing of cocoa butter. It's the last I have of this, so I'm going to use it. It's about a teaspoon, but honestly for this recipe, you probably need two teaspoons or maybe even two tablespoons. I'm just using a teaspoon because that's all I have left. You also want a container for your chapstick, so I'm going to be using this little honey jar. And you also need some coconut oil. According to a quick Google search, coconut oil soothes, softens, and moisturizes the lips and skin. So that's why we're adding it to this chapstick. Last ingredient is some peppermint essential oil for the smell. Now I'm just going to scoop out a teaspoon of coconut oil and add that to my teaspoon of cocoa butter. You can see it's not a whole lot there. I definitely need to double this recipe. But anyways, now I'm just going to stick those two ingredients in a pot with some water in it, and I'm going to double boil it until it is all melted together. The point here is to try and avoid putting the oil on direct heat so I don't accidentally burn it or anything. Once it's fully melted, we can add in our peppermint oil and mix all of those ingredients together. It's a really easy recipe, just three ingredients. And once it's mixed together, we can pour it into our small container. Okay, yeah, I definitely should have doubled this recipe just because of the container I was using. It's a little too big for the amount that I made. But anyways, that's done. I'm just going to set it aside to cool and we can move on to the last project. 
which is the eye mask. So on the computer, I just drew up a quick little design to go on it because I didn't want it to just be plain. I'm using an embroidery machine to do this design. Um, and I thought it was really funny because when I was adding in the little star shape, I came across one that said, there. Mother's Delight. Isn't that hilarious that the star is called Mother's Delight? So of course I had to use it in my design for the mask for my mother. <laughs> for Mother's Day. Anyways, here is my hoop and the fabric I'm going to be using. It's a kind of a soft light bluish gray fabric. And I'm just going to put it onto my embroidery hoop and put the stabilizer on top of that and then close the embroidery hoop just like I'm doing here. Ouch. Stab myself. And I'm going to slide it into the embroidery machine. Ouch! I keep pinching my fingers. Ouch. Yeah, I must have been having a clumsy day that day because I kept injuring myself. But finally, the fabric is on the embroidery machine and we are just going to quickly embroider this design onto the fabric. While that's embroidering, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about why I picked these products. I didn't go with any kind of body scrub or bath salt, which would have been really easy to add to a gift basket. But those are items that my mom doesn't use, and I am all for gifts that people will use. So I picked the cooling spray because she gets hot during the summer. I picked the chapstick because you always need more chapstick, and also I know she'll use it. And I picked the eye mask because she never gets enough rest, and hopefully one that says do not disturb on it will help her get some rest. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I'm glad it worked on the first try. So now that our words are embroidered onto the fabric, I'm just going to tear off the back of that stabilizer very carefully. And I'm also going to clip any of the strands of thread that are between the letters. And now I can finally cut out my eye mask shape out of two pieces of this fabric. I picked this soft light blue fabric because I felt like it was very cloud-like and, you know, I wanted there to be something soft on the eyes. I don't know if you've ever seen an eye mask before, but they're normally, like, super soft and comforting or silky. So that's why I picked this fabric. But, oh my goodness, this fabric gave me so much trouble while using it. It kept slipping and sliding, and then once it was cut, it was curling around. Oh, I also filled the eye mask with some batting because I wanted it to be extra cushiony. But anyways, back to the fabric. It was, like, not having it when I was trying to pin and when I was trying to sew it together. So, if I were to make an eye mask in the future, I probably wouldn't use this fabric. Or, if I did use this fabric, I would stick a stabilizer of some sort, maybe an interfacing, onto one of the sides, just so I have some structure to it. So, I was so busy trying to maneuver the fabric that I didn't realize that I did this. Wait. <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh whoops i um forgot to leave a hole for uh to flip it inside out so <laughs> we gotta gotta make one this nose bit looks really gross so i'm just gonna make the hole here yeah i accidentally sewed the whole thing closed without thinking you know what else I forgot to put the elastic in. I just, I, I can't with myself right now. Yeah, not only did I stab and pinch my fingers multiple times, but I also sewed the whole thing closed. I was having trouble with the fabric and I forgot the elastic. But you know what? It's an easy fix. I'm just going to cut two 12 inch long pieces of elastic and I'm going to open up a tiny little hole one on the top and the bottom of either side of the eye mask and I'm going to slide the elastic in through those tiny little holes that I made in between the seam and I'm just going to sew over that sewing it in place making sure the elastic is straight and not twisted and you know what we can move on right, I'm gonna sew those in place 
and then I'm going to flip it inside out. Easy fix, right? So now that the elastic is attached at the top and the bottom, we're just going to flip it inside out through that hole in the nose and stuff it with the batting again through that hole in the nose. I really tried to get the batting to lay as flat as I could here. Oh my god. <laughs> Alright, you know what? That's good enough. It's a little misshapen, but... It's fine. Now I'm just going to top stitch where the nose is at. Just a quick top stitch to seal up that hole. And there we go. <laughs> There's our face mask. You know, it's going to do the job even if the, the shape is weird. This was my first attempt at an eye mask, but it's really soft to the touch and it feels comfortable. So let's just move on and put this basket together. Oh my god, it smells so good. <laughs> Here's our cooling spray and our mask. So I just grabbed a small random basket and a little bit of white tissue paper and rearranged the products in the basket. It's at this point that I realized it needed a little bit something else, so I grabbed two pieces of blue paper and I just tried to freehand a blue paper rose. I've seen several videos of other crafters who specifically make paper products, make these flowers before, and I thought, oh yeah, I can do it. I can just, you know, guess at how it goes, but I had, I struggled so hard not following any kind of tutorial or anything for this flower. So if you're going to make a paper flower, I recommend you just follow a tutorial, or you're going to spend literally like an hour just trying to make one flower. But in general, what I did was cut out some petal shapes out of the paper and I just wrapped them up kind of in a spiral-like shape, but I just kept adding petals wherever I felt like it needed one more. And then I ended up with some kind of thing. <laughs> Something that kind of looks like a flower. And it ended up like really, really big. It's a really, really big rose. But the key things that I think really made the flower look, you know, decent is that I scalloped the top of the petals so it wasn't just a smooth curve. I made the top of the petal wavy. <laughs> and I also curled the top of the petals. So instead of just having a flat piece of paper, I took a pin or my finger and just curled the top of it so it kind of flipped outward away from the center of the flower. And there we go. There is our relaxing gift basket. A personalized gift basket is a great way to show your mother some appreciation on Mother's Day. I hope you got some good inspiration from this video, and I would like to know in the comments down below what items would be in your mom's gift basket. If you were to personalize some items that you think your mother would use and appreciate on Mother's Day, let me know in the comments down below what those items would be. Hit the like button, share this video with other people who need gift inspiration, and please subscribe because I post every Friday at 3. Thank you for watching! Do not disturb. I have no idea if the camera's catching this.